So, jetzt erwischt. Hallo, Cameron und Pearson. After two reviews and some tests with Soldiers of Napoleon, I wanted to try something different. In this video, I want to add a how to play for this game and a short after action report of a test game with my son. But at first, the introduction into playing Soldiers of Napoleon. In difference to the rulebook, I will start with units. There are three principal types of units infantry, cavalry, and artillery. In addition, there are commanders or generals. Units consist of two to six bases with the exception of artillery. Infantry and cavalry can form in three basic formations. March column, attack column and line. The type of formation determines the speed of movement and the fighting capacity. Here it should be stated that infantry in attack column attacking in close combat gets a bonus, whereas cavalry gets a penalty. Artillery can be deployed or limbered. Infantry can use some special formations. Light infantry can form an extended line, some form of screen, what makes them harder to hit, but more vulnerable to charges. They can form square, which prevents cavalry from attacking without special event, and they can deploy their light companies or skirmishers. Deployed skirmishers screen their parent unit and can attack on a smaller scale with long range fire. Two or more units form a brigade under a commanding general. At the start of a turn, every army is dealt two cards and one more for each brigade on the field. This can be played for special events, rallying of brigades or orders. The number of orders on an action card ranges from 2 to 6. It costs one order if the brigade general is in 10 paces of a unit and more if he is further away. Most orders are self-explanatory, like march, body fire or skirmish fire, but some orders are a little different. Quick march adds 15% to the unit's movement, but gives the unit a disruption hit. In difficult terrain, the normal movement drops to 1d6 with a maximum by formation. Here quick march lets you throw two dice and choose a higher one. This also costs one disruption wound. The harass order given to light cavalry can force deployed skirmishers to be pulled back into the unit. This can cause disruption on the cavalry unit. Intimidation is an order for heavy cavalry to force discipline tests on up to two units which can cause disruption wounds if failed. The last two cavalry orders have a range of 20 paces, the same as skirmish fire. This is a preliminary skirmish of this game and precedes the normal missile or melee combat. A brigade receiving two orders suffers one point of disruption, one on each of its units. Units take the brunt of combat in the form of disruption. If a unit has a higher disruption rating than bases at the end of a turn, it is eliminated. Units with disruption don't fight worse. On the other side, if a unit has no disruption or disorder, it gets a bonus in range combat. Welling of units is done per brigade. All units with the quality level mentioned on the action card allowed to take a rally test. Special events are the risk and chances of battle. They can give you wonderful benefits or let you waste an action card. And not in vain, in the end, the division general. 
He can give you a reroll of one dice or, if the opponent has more cards than you, an action card per command point. This is another chance of luck, but no more. This is a rough summary of the rules and resulting technical mechanics. The rest is seeing this in action. And that's what we do next. For our test game we used two Austrian large divisions with a strong vanguard brigade and two line brigades. The terrain was built according to standard rules. One of the two divisions were represented by French. My French division was ordered a steady advance and after the deployment I decided to concentrate two brigades on the enemy's right flank and keep the enemy in check with the advance guard. The Austrian division of my son chose a defensive strategy with refusal of the right flank. In the first turns the two French infantry brigades advanced rapidly while the Austrians struggled to position themselves on the difficult terrain of the cornfields. Artillery fire was exchanged, but to no real effect. The cavalry units of both sides advanced slightly, but tried to stay out of the enemy's attack range. With the third round troops got into skirmish range. Skirmish battle was indecisive. Both infantry brigades consisted of units with a skirmish rating of 1. This is one dice skirmish fire, minus one die if the opponent is screened by his own skirmishers. Stalemate. British rifles with a skirmish rating of 3 hitting on a 3 plus and the chance to reroll one miss are another caliber. To compare this to artillery, one base a unit has two dice, one for the base and one for being in good order, and it hits on a 5 plus. On the sixth turn, the French started their assault on the Austrian flank. To the horror, the division commander was killed by a straight cannonball. A special event played by my son. But it couldn't stop the attack. French troops charged into close combat and threw the enemy back. While French troops continued to march up more units and fired on the flank, the Austrians managed to heavily disrupt a French Grenzer unit on the other flank and to rally their own troops on the pressed flank without giving victory points to the enemy. With the end of the sixth round, Austria had fulfilled their hold the line object and received three victory points. This was the turning point of the battle. Austria won the initiative and started to pump lead into the close-packed French ranks. With no card to rally lower rank troops like the Genzer, they were lost and the French had to concentrate their effort to rally the line troops, which were covered with too effective Austrian fire. The Austrians started to advance with the infantry. One French unit was sent to the hill on the left to fulfill an object too. Take the high ground. Preparation for the cavalry charge on the other flank had to be halted to keep troops under fire together and cut losses by rallying. Every rally attempt giving victory points to the Austrians. Nevertheless, casualties in the center mounted. On the tenth turn, the Austrians had managed to maneuver into the French flank and to cut them off the cavalry support. Both sides' losses continued to mount, but the Austrians held a slight lead in victory points, earning them the victory at the end of the tenth turn. Congratulations! A lesson learned for me was to write off units, and don't always try to save them. The rally actions ensured the lead in victory points for Austria. In addition, it took away the possibility for counterattacks, which would have made more sense. I hope you were able to win something for yourself with this video too. Thanks for watching to the end. Till then.